Do you think that Diddy is going to be able to get out of this, or do you think he's going down a path like R. Kelly? My first day on this job, I forgot that I was working and I was up doing pressed pills ecstasy until like 5 a.m. Speaking of Mexicans, let's do the parent of the week. Well, the reason why my knee, there's a white spot on my knee is because we were eating outside and I had my leg like this and I had a cheeseburger and french fries <laughs> right here. Name my baby. If I choose the name based on your suggestion, his middle name will be your first name. Wow. wow. I felt like it was weird to be on the plane with ashes. I'm not gonna lie to you. I felt shame about it. Why? Because do you feel like you're kind of in a subtle small way doing blackface. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> That's probably what it would be. <laughs> that is such a great collateral accident yes. for what your focus would be. Because, of course, your mind's everywhere. You're yep. trying to get... <laughs> yeah. That's 100% so, how so it happened. Being in a relationship, it's like I barely... Like, you don't text when you drive. Like, I'm just focused mm -hmm. on getting home or... It, typically I'm on the phone with her and she's telling me what she's mad about so yeah. I can't text anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I think. I'm almost positive in three months I'd be done. Yeah, I think you're actually right. Dude, look at this. I have a sauce stain on my sneaker. That's how you know you're disgusting. Oh, that's good stuff. And you just found, did you, have you worn those before these today? Sneakers, these sneakers I've wore like maybe a week ago, but I have a, a pizza crust sauce stain Right here, but I will say, you ready for this? Here's a big announcement. I have not had pizza in 16 days. I gave up pizza for Lent, Whoa. and I've stuck to it. I did have pizza at the Soho House <laughs> three days ago, but it was vegan cauliflower crust. It was vegan cauliflower crust. <laughs> I was thinking about that. I was like, I guess I polished off two pies to the dome the no, other night by I myself. Vegan cheese cauliflower crust. It does. Jesus, I asked Jesus. He said it doesn't count. Yeah, because it's not. It's a little bit of yeast, but not enough for it to break Lent officially. Exactly. Exactly. Have yeah. you ever? Do you if do I that wanna, every if year? If I want to eat some yeast, I'll suck my own dick. <laughs> <laughs> Just feed from the tip like a thirsty rabbit. <laughs> Suckling out some bread. Um, would do you usually give shit up for Lent? No, but <laughs> and she's right. My family this year was like, you know, our kids are the older ones are thirteen and eight. They're in Catholic school. We. It's it's insane that it's taken this long, but we finally realize like we have to be examples for them. Sure, and they're watching us because for the longest we were just like they're little kids, they're not paying attention. Just give them an iPad. Did but you... now we're like, oh, we absolutely have to be better. <laughs> so we're like, we have to give things up for Lent if we want them to give up things for Lent. Sure. Can I ask you this from a cynical, completely uh, extracted from religion type person? What is it about religion that makes you like that thinks it's valuable for them? Like, do you think that the actual organization of the Catholic Church is valuable for them or is the faith valuable for them? For me, it's it's giving them some kind of structure, okay. something to stick to, something when they're getting like really anxious, even if it's not real, they could be like, well, if I, you know, do what I do, if I live my life by the Bible and, you know, um, uh, do what I'm supposed to do and have someone to pray to it, like gives them some type of like North Star to follow. Cause I don't know what I'm doing sure. at all <laughs> as a parent, as a human being, I yeah. have no clue. So I'm like, well, at least if you just follow Jesus, sure. He seemed like he did some pretty good things. <laughs> can I, can I volley it back to you and yes. see what you think about my, so instead of me, my, uh, my Jesus, like my North Star, I'm trying to make their North, like Cruz North Star inside of him. Okay. So to follow his own instinct and his gut and stuff like that, because he's been talking about getting nervous lately and like feeling kind of, he talked, he called them feathers yeah. in his stomach. Like he's like, something's tickling me. Like he just didn't know how to react to it. But I explained to him that that's just like nervousness and feeling unsure right. about something. And I'm trying to basically put it like his Christ is in him. All, at all times so i'm not saying it's a guy in a robe with a beard but i'm saying trust your gut trust your north star right christ is in you without it being well christ. that's that's good because there was uh a priest of mine when i was 15, uh 13 years old he said i want to put christ inside you <laughs> <laughs> the body of christ the body of christ <laughs> They priests used to say that they were the body of Christ. Yeah, like, yeah, Would you did, like to did, be a Catholic turducken? Yeah. <laughs> did you get ashes? I did. I love ashes. I love being on that gang gang Catholic shit. Yes. Did you, you get did. them? No, I flew out at seven a.m. that day, so oh. I did not get them. And uh, I also I felt like it was weird to be on the plane with ashes. I'm not gonna lie to you. I felt shame about it. Well, why? Because do you feel like you're kind of in a subtle, small way doing blackface? <laughs> <laughs> it does look like you just got done with an underground minstrel show for yeah. sure. Dude, my favorite thing at Sirius would be working on Ash Wednesday because you would just see random celebrities who like they chose radio that day because they'd want to get their ashes but not have it public facing. I can't remember any off the top of my head, but it would be wild to just see random celebrities with the crisscross on their forehead. Yeah, yeah. I will say Ash Wednesday is actually probably the best day for casual sex because you can literally walk around and see who will keep it. Yep. You yeah, know what I mean? It's a good point. It's yeah. like, no, nope, not you. You have the the yeah. mark of God on yeah. your forehead. <laughs> yeah, I uh I've this year I think cuz I read that case for Christ book, I've been the most 
I haven't done it yet, but I've been like, I'm going to go back to church. And it's been like in my head, but I haven't done it, but I know that it's getting close. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, what church would you go to one around your way? Or have you found like a special one? Have you been to St. Patrick's? Like a, no, like an actual service? No, but I want to go to the catacombs under St. Patrick's. That'd be sick. They oh, have, I would love they to have do legit that. catacombs. Here? Yes. They do. They have a catacomb tour. I well, as that. a front facing Catholic now, similar to Mark Wahlberg, we should start our own Halo app, by the way. Um, do you think you would be invited? down there to see maybe like the chalice of mary or whatever or whatever yes. down in those catacombs. i think yeah i think i think that I, I think that i have a pretty good shot and i think i will start to go to church again i'm just waiting for like that one like you know text message jasmine finds from my past where she threatens to ruin the whole family yeah. and then i'll ask god for help that's dude that's what i'll it. Keep it as your ace in the hole <laughs> yes. for when you truly <laughs> fuck up. Yeah. That's when you have to like how everybody's like, I'm a sex addict. <laughs> like, just like, whatever. You're like, no, you're right. I have to get it right. I'm yeah, going to yeah. go to Christ church, church. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's fucking, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I feel like lately I've been, um, I don't know, I guess because I got this special mm. coming up or anytime you have something big coming up, you just start to feel like, you just start to feel like, um, I don't know if everybody has this button, but for people at home, when you have something huge about to happen in your life, something you've been looking forward to, do you want to ruin it or are you hoping that something gets sabotaged about it and you're and you're looking for that? Is that normal or is that just me? No. I mean, well, it's shared. I have the same exact thing where it's like you obviously want it to be successful. You want to get through right. it. You also want to be present for the moment. But then some part of you is like, I think it would be easier for me to just set fire to everything. Yeah, like I'm kind of like, you know, I'm kind of like I can't wait for Monday morning when when it's over. And I'm kind of like I'm hoping that like I don't go in to the show like moments before like because this has happened before we're like moments before a big event i'm like even if i did great nobody cares this is meaningless <laughs> and then you i'll want go that out feeling with that or energy. don't i don't oh okay i want to go in i want to go in well if that happened i want to go in positive but sure. a lot of times i'll do that and i'll be like it doesn't fucking matter anyway yeah even, even if even if i crushed who cares i mean i think there's that's correct but it can be looked at in a uh, you could probably filter it through a more positive thing Right. It's like, yeah, nobody really does care. This doesn't necessarily impact humanity on a grand scale. So no, no matter what this is, it will be great. And it is kind of a representation yeah. of me in right. and of itself. But I so I think like this all the time. And then I get really so I I I hate then I feel guilt, then I feel hatred about myself. Right. That's like my that's entire cycle. That's my whole cycle. So I am immediately cynical about a special taping. I feel guilty about being cynical because this was my entire dream the, the, the since I was a kid. Like I literally have started this life path in hopes that one day I would film a special in front of people that are coming out intentionally to see me. It's a big moment. And then as soon as you're in the space, you're like, I, I want to get out of it. Like the sauce. Yeah, I, wanna I don't want to do it. Yeah, exactly. P. Diddy, dude, speaking of jerking off. <laughs> speaking of liquids. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so P. Diddy and me. So I'm I'm I know a little bit about it. I know that there's been rumors that P. Diddy uh uh like would get like what? Like like make other kind of prominent celebrities do gay stuff and kind of keep them in line, like honey pot them in a way, like what we think the government does, or like the one percent to like keep people in line. They think that. Diddy also did this, right? It is that like what it he, is? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't sound like he made anybody do anything as much as he facilitated it. You know what I mean? Like, it sounds like this type of shit is just going on in Hollywood. Right. Which it's hard to, it's hard to, like, not be a conspiracy theorist, I guess, because it, but it's not even a conspiracy. Right. It's like, all this stuff just continues to come out, be it Army Hammer just, you know, eating somebody and banging. Well, well, it not only does it come out, but it feels like there's the powers that be, whomever that is, know about this for yeah. a long time, and then they just decide to drop it. So you wonder, like, what he did or didn't do to piss off, because it's not just coincidental no. that it's coming out all at once. Now, it's somebody was like, I'm going to leak it. Just like I think you piss any... That's why I think being anonymous is the best way to be in today's world because it's like at any moment, if you got to a certain level, if any of us got to this certain prom... We'd be huge stars, whatever happened, and we pissed off a power that be, they could like release your text messages from 15 years ago sure. like that. Yeah, I think this is like... this. You want to be the, under the radar. I think this is one of those things where the first domino fell with That's Cassidy. why I'm happy that this podcast is crumbling. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will never be subject to yes, any type of this is a safety choice. The reason why the numbers are plummeting, this is a safety choice for us. 
<laughs> we're intentionally less entertaining, you see. Yes. Uh, okay. So I think it, it, it feels like, though, that everybody knows this is going on with certain people, right? Right. But it, I also think that there's almost contingency plans when something like this happens. So Cassidy seemed like the first domino to fall. Whether that was planned or not, I have no idea. Right. But it almost feels like... With 9-11, we use 9-11 to get into, you know, unjust wars. Right. We use all this other stuff to martial law, all this thing. So it's like never let a good catastrophe go to waste. Right. So they see Cassidy go down and they're like, you know what? Let's pull the ripcord on thing. This it, it, Sean P. Diddy Combs is no longer a viable investment and a power shelter for us to do, you know, funnel yeah. things through. So boom, let's start getting all this shit to come out. And then he gets completely wiped off the planet and that power gets pushed on to the next guy. To the next guy. I mean, Russell Simmons is more or less... The same thing right wasn't he getting i mean it, to a lesser extent of course and obviously unfounded because this is all accusations but uh it like it seemed as though he was like similarly like that type of power hungry manipulative and he got hit he got hit at the beginning of me too right like yeah yeah by his wife by his wife and he's just been like living on a fucking yacht apparently somewhere like yeah well here the me too movement now 70. the me too movement now because people would always say well the me too movement it like doesn't apply to like black people mm -hmm. but now it does now yeah. it's like everything because like at the same time you'd have like because at simultaneous at the same time you'd have like you know somebody getting in trouble for like a tweet you'd have like a rapper you know well, talking about like pussy and and that's, all this crazy stuff that's the twitter uh logic for like shane hosting snl and 21 savage which is such a great point it's like yeah shane said this joke that bothered some people sure and 21 savage like kind of unironically discusses murdering people yeah <laughs> and and drugging and whatever it, which i am also okay with yeah but i'm just saying why aren't the fucking white jezebel writers going after 21 right. 21 so do you think though that diddy do you think that diddy is going to be able to get out of this or do you think he's going down a path like r kelly yeah, when yeah. r kelly like couldn't get out of it because because the justice system it becomes so big sometimes where the justice system now even if they don't want to do anything they're like well we have to at this point you think it's going down that or you think you can just get out of it do you know what this feels like this feels like scar at the end of lion king and the the fire completely circles him and then the hyenas emerge from the shadows right. and they're ready to take out their you know imagine they have video of jonathan taylor thomas blowing diddy <laughs> <laughs> and that's why he left hollywood yeah yeah just diddy holding his mullet from the back so what are the accusations like what is it what, what are the facts Facts, Vito. This is interesting. So this says one of the things he was doing was forcing people to do coke with him. Oh, okay. And actually, Andy Cohen as well just got in some shit because he's had accusations of him just forcing people to do blow before they went out and watch what happens live. Right. Again, accusations allegedly. Alleg I mean, allegedly, some, some say force, others say you need this to talk on camera. Right. <laughs> you just got too drunk well, before we said action. One of my friends who's a cop was telling me that, and I don't know what it is, but some law. It's like a brand new law that the government was trying to use to get Trump in trouble to prevent him from going uh, to run for president. That that same law that is like legally on the books now is the reason why you're seeing people like Diddy and them go down because it's something about the statute of limitations. It's something about like how many years back it. they can go well and it also feels like almost corporate rico predic predicate it's rico it, that's yeah, where it. they are now lumping things in and are able to charge you under an umbrella or at least investigate under an umbrella of charges in other areas that they couldn't before because it was only did you, know, you see this one specific. i'm gonna i'm gonna send you this one um oh god emilio called me should i call him back on the pod yeah see what see what's going on uh, that's fine special need a new content a new a segment on the show just called advice from Chris's cop friends because I feel like, <laughs> yes, I feel like we get a bad. lot of feedback from your cop friends on this show and I think it's like I think it's a new recurring thing okay here yeah yeah because he advice from my cop friends but hold on let me um here keep talking let me get this video let me get this video because it's one with Kevin Hart you see the one with Kevin Hart no yeah so so um where That's is exciting it? I had a question, actually. I saw this. I saw a picture of Margot Robbie yesterday, and she's just so attractive mm. that it's actually painful. God, I wanna, I'd love to eat her shit. Do you think she's ever had diarrhea? No. And if she did, I don't think, like, we would look at it as diarrhea. It would just look like, it would just look like, like you know. Like a fountain soda. Yeah, it would just look beautiful. Here yeah. we go. I'm sending this. Like, do you think she, if she does, though, she definitely gets, like, more Australian as she shits, right? Like, Is she ah, Australian? Get out of me. Yeah. <laughs> get it out of me. Get out of me. I text you the Kevin Hart thing. It was interesting because it's like this thing that, oh, by the way, speaking of that also cop friend stuff, did you guys see the video 
of the protester lighting himself on fire. Like no. the whole video. No. Because like they took it off the internet immediately, but then in my cop friend chat, it came to the chat. As it a, yeah. is nuts. On Patreon, I'm going to show you the guy lighting himself on fire Sick. that protested Free Palestine. It's wild. Does it show the cop just pointing the Everything, gun at dude. <laughs> It shows him yelling Free Palestine <sighs> about five times and then just collapse. And to be Here's clear, we're putting it on Patreon because we can't, we literally cannot. We can't do it. it. Yeah. But I'll, that's, I'll go to Patre Patreon.com, Patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. That's where it'll be. You know, there's some things we just, the uncensored version of the show lives there. Oh, so that, shit on Patreon. Yeah. yeah, yeah the, you guys know the deal with YouTube at this point. So we can't show certain things. YouTube is, as YouTube censors like, you know, a network does so we have to put the other the stuff that some wild stuff we have to put it at patreon.com slash christy comedy but here we go we could play this this is p diddy and kevin hart i don't know how long ago but oh i do remember this yeah didn't somebody's hair get caught on fire or something no it's like just that? kevin hart being like i'm not getting in the bed which it's one of these things though where it's like this could be the most innocuous innocent i mean the most innocent thing ever and it's just like now with this it like you know you, you start to play you know uh uh what do, what do you say? Like when you just start to you connect the dots, connect the dots. But right. it's also like there. I think it was a part of this exact thing, too. There was a thing where Kevin Hart and Diddy were like interviewing girls in a jacuzzi. And one of the girls was so fucked up. Her hair just caught on fire. I would have loved to be at these parties. If I'm going to be honest with you, yeah. even if it meant me getting my face in one of these videos, if I could go back in time, I put myself at one of these parties. I want to be there. Why wouldn't you? Just yeah. to experience what Hollywood is all about, yes. you know? Just getting deep-dicked by a shape-shifting reptile. Yeah. Not bad. Well, that's why I like that show real quick, House of Usher. Nothing to do with Usher from these videos, but House of Usher, <laughs> because the, print, the, the premise of that show, House of Usher, is pretty much what you find out at the end, is, you know, would you make a deal pretty much with the devil to get mm. endless power, limited resources. You're going to live. The thing is, you're going to live a full life. You're never going to get implicated in a crime, nothing. But before you die, all of your children will die. Huh. But then, so, so that's what happens. Basically, all the kids that they had throughout, yeah. they all eventually die in some type of accident. Any type of, anybody associated with your fam, with the Usher family, will die including you two and you can't get out of it but they've given them an amazing like elon musk billionaire life for all the kids and everybody yeah. gets whatever they want but you're gonna die see this is why i'm destined to fail is because every part of me wants to be able to say yes like let's go i'll sign a deal with the devil who gives a shit i'll be a complete sociopath right. capitalistically but then i can't put myself there i can't do it yeah i can't do i wouldn't it. be able to pull the trigger i can't do it i i'm i'm definitely can tell you like i'm much more comfortable you know kind of having like less and just being like i just want i'm as my life is going on i'm like i just want time with like no struggle and sometimes adding like a tour you know wanting to be the fucking when you hear someone say i want to be the best to ever do it what i hear is you want a life of struggle a life of pain it's that is so and by the way it's also so just in your head it's like that's such a subjective thing when someone's like i want to be the best ever it's like to who you're there's gonna be people who are gonna not think you're the best ever for sure no and you're literally battling ghosts like yeah. part of me really loves lebron james like i really yeah, I love, do I love, love lebron him. james love watching him love the fact that he's dedicated his life to this like truly has dedicated his full life to and greatness. lebron don't forget like when he did the decision yeah. you know in my everybody hated him yeah so he's just won it back on pure merit and working his ass off. And everybody there, loves him again yeah there's a there's a fair amount of people that don't like him because he's lame or says dumb shit or gets involved politically and it's like teach their own i don't care i don't I, that, doesn't I, that stuff me. does not even bleed into my opinion one way or another right but there is a part of me that watches a guy like that who has been given those gifts and then also has capitalized on those gifts by being as disciplined as probably a human being could and then you also look at it and you're like you're like kind of also throwing away part of your life right. <laughs> you know what i mean like you're only playing basketball it's like granted nobody could look at him and be like you're not doing it right yeah but there's a part of me in the back of my head where i'm like I don't know if you're doing it right. You're right. Does any part of you think about that when you see an uber successful person, like even Taylor Swift, somebody making a billion dollars over a summer, clearly is doing it right. But there's something about how stacked her life is and how much her connection to other people must suffer that I look at it and I'm like, 
you're not doing it right. Yeah. And I'm not doing it right. I'm just being judgmental. Well, that's the thing. I think so that's why some people say like the only people doing it right are like these like, you know, like Dalai Lama monks, Tibet monks who have no possessions and just sit there and meditate for 23 hours a day. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the right path though too? It's like, you know, I've taken mushrooms and then after the six hours I felt lazy. So I yes. did something for real. This is from Mike's and this video is from Mike's uh, alternate Twitter account, the queen of accountability. <laughs> <laughs> Where is John? Go ahead. And we, uh, we want to thank you. Come here. Don't, don't sit on the bed at night. No homo. No, just, just don't get close to the bed. Don't get close to the bed. But it's just like, yo, we want to thank you for hosting the thing, man. Man, you, you, it's been a pleasure. You didn't have to do it. You did it. No, no, I definitely didn't have to do it. I, I definitely didn't have to. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not getting the bed. Uh, you know, shout out to him and what he did. I'm just gonna. Dude, hold on. That was already. Already. The Diddy look at him was girl, was like, that was a girlfriend pose. Right. Did you see that? That like snap of like, you're not getting into bed with me? Like, that was a very entitled, like, how dare you on camera right. just say that? Just say that, right. <laughs> Let's see. Let's just put the camera a little this way, just so we're not. I don't want my shot to even, like, I don't want it to come close to the bed at all. I should look like he fresh off got goddamn plane. I should, I should, I should, I should. Fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, just not. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older. Oh, no. Oh, no. Over the Frosted Flakes, you know what I'm saying? Before pause was invented, you know what I'm saying? But it's my brother for real. We used to actually. He's saying this in public in front of everybody. Sure all is. For the frosted flakes because he used to always get up early. Now he's one of the richest dogs in the world. And I'm Yo. Like, this is why herpes is rampant, though, in Hollywood, said. right? Right. Is because Usher, like, apparently is known to have herpes, right. allegedly. He's spread it. There's been lawsuits about it, all this stuff. And it's like, so P. Diddy must have some fucking butt flowers as well. Right. And they're just passing out this same strain to all of Hollywood. And it's just. Well, yeah, everywhere, even that, too, like, you know, like you would think, like, if that's true, like lawsuits against you, this and that, you'd be canceled, whatever. It's like, no, dude, you'll host the Super Bowl halftime show. <laughs> that's what will happen. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wild? Is during this entire thing, almost like as a it kind of like proves it. Right? right. That like, you know, when the do you remember when the lights went out when Beyonce was performing that people said that conspiratorially that was Blue Ivy getting inducted into the Illuminati? Really? <laughs> that all of the energy and all of the electricity from the stadium was actually beamed directly into Blue Ivy during that moment and then it boosted back up and she's now in the Illuminati. <laughs> she's now in the Illuminati. <laughs> but, but you see that and you're like, Usher is in involved in all of these things. Right. And then he's literally the performer at the Super, Super Bowl, Bowl in the same year. So this this thing that no, too, like, you know, like Diddy and, 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 you know, what the video you just saw, it's like, they're also all probably just drunk fucking around. Yeah. Like, but things like this now, you know, when things come out, you start to be like, what, what about this? I, listen, here's the thing. I have no, I'm sure that especially pre me too movement, there was wild, wild, wild parties and oh, yeah. sex power stuff happening. And it's been happening since the beginning of time. Well, and people leveraging power, not only as a, as like, it wasn't abuse. It was like, no, that's why I got this job. Right. <laughs> so I could do that. Right. Isn't that the point of being successful? Yeah. And then people were told that was wrong and everybody was like, oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So him and Meek Mill were both, Usher and Meek Mill were both like, I don't I don't know what the term, and I, we'll say accused of having relations with Diddy. Sure. And uh, Meek has been going to war with Andrew Tate and Andrew Tate's following over this because Andrew Tate somehow is involved in this sure. now. And uh, Meek said, I'm from Philly. I don't do coke or freaky ass Molly. Nobody nobody won't even offer me coke because I'm that heavy. No man or what would ever approach me about gay activity. And the whole place don't get flipped. Woke up seeing this on every blog like they know I'm coming. LOL. Coming on guys' faces. Dude. <laughs> he, he has put his foot. I mean, the guy, he is the definition of doth protest too much. Right. Because he has not stopped tweeting since these yeah. allegations have come out so he like still has some crusted cum on his bottom lip but i gotta read this like he wh where was this what thing? is the accusation on that meek Mill that he just had up? Set. yeah that yeah. he just banged diddy so he wrote oh. th this is like right after it came out it's like one of the greatest tweets in the history of the website and he wrote when i got a girl around me i'm fucking her twice a day lol ask some of your favorites Pussy don't control me, but it's like a high. One love to the gay people, but that juicy pussy do it for me. <laughs> Smiley face. I done ran red lights to get that feeling. Y'all weird on here like devils, LOL. 
I mean, <laughs> you're the best, dude. Yeah. You are definitely not gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like when when Steve Carell and Forty Year Old Virgin was like, they feel like bags of sand. <laughs> <laughs> it's the exact same thing. The thing is, though, in this community, in the hip hop community, like these allegations, things like this, like that, you really will get killed for that. Sure. Yeah. Like somebody, sure. it's not out of the question that somebody's going to try to get to somebody else in the gang community, not necessarily hip hop. Like if you affiliate yourself with like gang shit and like true yeah. thug life shit, where that stuff is like. Not only openly discouraged, but like, yeah, yeah, you will you will die if you suck a dick type shit. Where it's like, yeah, then then that's tough because and Meek always is in, involved with right. the, with the gays, you know, it, not necessarily as a member, just like trying to do some programs and all that stuff, the jail program. So now he's he's getting <laughs> accused but of being culturally. Gay. I do think that they're like that kind of terminology is so different between like white and black culture because like my i have a friend like me and you like we would say to each other if you said something you'd be like i'll oh, suck my dick and it wouldn't sure. be a big deal we sure. move on yeah, i would just suck it i said <laughs> i said that a few years ago me and my friend were arguing and i said suck my dick yeah and he got fucking violently mad at yeah yeah and yeah. said the phrase don't ever invite me to your penis yeah Dude, really saying gay shit to black to like my black basketball teammates i may as well have been pointing a gun yeah like right. if i was literally like come on over here with that dick like if i was just anything that we would do normally together it was truly like the no 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 yeah. like they've never been around a slap it on the butt any of that stuff yeah. not do that very different it was fun yeah it is weird though to see all the infighting on like club shay shay and shit within the the urban comedy yeah. community and all of the stuff because it it tends it it boils down to like two things it's like a it, posi position of power and blanket homophobia. Right. <laughs> so it's like it's like if you are making more money, then you're probably some of these guys have not treated other people well, or like asking anybody to do anything even moderately effeminate is grounds for like I will never trust you well, again. Cat yep. Williams didn't he claim that Kevin Hart yeah. didn't he? He did some sexual. That's what Cat Williams said on Club Shay Shay that he yeah. did some sexual favors to get ahead. Also, this has nothing to do with. Um, homophobia but did you guys see ab's tweet about dave portnoy because it, it, <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a good one it's so fucking good dave portnoy and his minions writing articles to defend tom brady and he put in an ai cracker with a crown and a laptop <laughs> who did <laughs> antonio brown, antonio yeah. brown. <laughs> <laughs> just a room of crackers uh, that is outstanding uh, it's amazing even portnoy probably had to laugh at that he said he actually retweeted it said it's funny is funny Funny is funny. Yeah. yeah. Which yes. you got to give him credit for that. And also, I mean, dude, the idea, though, that somebody like AB, who, you know, has some mental issues that we've all been, uh, seen, we've all been witnesses to, but the idea that he's now going to be prompting AI. That's it's exciting. I would love to think that we're seeing what's inside Antonio Brown's brain. Yes, yes. Yes. I mean, somebody like that who is so fucking also like mentally out there, he could create the first digital sinkhole and just have the entire internet fall into it. That would be awesome. His Twitter is great. If you're not following AB on Twitter, he goes at everybody now. Follow AB on Twitter. AB, come at us. What's up, Chaos listeners, viewers, and others? Perfect time of year for our next sponsor, Prize Picks. What is Prize Picks, you ask? It is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. We are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. That's daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players. That's people that have all the time in the world to do their research. They might have inside sources for each team, tell you who might be coming up with an injury. You're not competing against those people. Thank you. God, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. That's all it is, guys. Football season may be over. I know I'm struggling, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there is no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious Cash. You can now win up to 100 times your money. That's I stumbled so much because I couldn't possibly believe that that was true. 100 times your money on prize picks with, a, with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1,000 with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. I mean, we all have our favorite players, right? 
more so than just our team. We have individuals that we like and we would like to root for and say our team is not doing well. We then can put all of our fandom into individuals with which what is better than that and gives us more of a scapegoat. For instance, me, I see a bet. Stephen Curry for more than 29 points and Nikola Jokic for more than 10 rebounds. I mean, what am I not going to click that? It's unbelievable. I'm absolutely going to do the Anthony Davis for more than two blocks. Let's hope he's playing. And Damian Lillard for more than four point four three pointers made and only two complaints against the city of Milwaukee. Is that an option? Who knows? But guys, they're all available at Prize Picks. Download the app today and use code Chaos for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Download the app today. That's Prize Picks. Use code Chaos for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Folks, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know me, still the same OG that needs therapy. I am constantly crying. My emotions are all over the place. I'm feeling down. I'm feeling up. I'm manic. I'm this. I'm that. BetterHelp has offered an outlet for me to get those feelings organized and have somebody that I pay be forced to listen to my issues. I think therapy is hugely important. It's allowed me to just not take out my grief and just problems on my family Chris seems to be in better spirits because I'm not shouting at him on a weekly basis. Vito is no longer taking lashings. We're all emotionally stronger around here simply because of BetterHelp. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime. That's the best part, is if you get a therapist and you think, ah, we're not quite connecting, I've gone a couple times, and it just feels like we're, we're just not quite simpatico, then you can, boom, shift gears Find another therapist that suits your needs and fits your, you know, fits exactly what you're looking for. I find that to be really important because when I've done in-person therapy, it's, you can't do that. You can't swipe right on a human being's face. So it's better at BetterHelp. Do that. Visit BetterHelp.com slash chaos today to get 10% off your first month. It's huge. B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash chaos 10% off your first month, and not to mention just a completely new outlook on life. Enjoy. I went to Puerto Rico uh, last week with uh, Jake Paul at the Jake Paul's house, which is a piece of shit. <laughs> just a little beach shack. Yeah. No, it's a beautiful, beautiful house. Very awesome. And I uh, did his pod, and we were in Puerto Rico, and I got so far. I'm going to send you my sunburn. We could post my sunburn. I got, I was out. I was out in the sun for maybe 45 minutes and I got literally almost like third degree sunburns. And I was like, how could that happen so quick? And then the, the guy was like, cause you're on the equator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You put nothing on. No, dude. What were you doing outside? Like, were you laying down? Were yeah, you we were active? laying on the beach. Oh, okay. And it, was, and it was cloudy, but I just, this is just what Puerto Rico does to your boy. Hold on. Let me, I'll text Do you think it. it was Puerto Rico's revenge for you constantly claiming you're Puerto Rican? Yes, probably. Yeah, and they were like, no, you're not, you dumb fuck. <laughs> Dude, I, my we're going to show you the difference. My skin is so fucking itchy. Yeah. My skin is so itchy because of, I had to go to my, as soon as we landed, I went to my mom's house to pick up the kids, and my mom could see Ooh. it all over me, and she was like, Ooh. she just started rubbing aloe Ooh. on me. Isn't it the worst, too, that you Look really, at how blotchy it is, Yeah, too. well, because the, there's no even. They, you can't get it even. Like, your knee was obviously bent in a way that was covered and yeah. everything else. Well, the reason why my knee, there's a white spot on my knee, is because we were eating outside, and I had my leg like this, and I had a cheeseburger and french fries <laughs> right here that I was eating. That I Look at, look, dude, I sunburned my feet. You have not. You didn't sunburn your feet. You sunburned your fucking toes. <laughs> your foot is actually, like, kind of fine. It's your toes that somehow get dude, Dude, it was, and Jasmine was sitting there right next to me the whole time with tanning oil on, like, so baking, and didn't have an ounce of a sunburn, just yeah. golden tan. Yeah, I mean, she's from there. It makes sense. But go back to your feet. Your feet look like, you ever, like, make something intricate with clay, but then part of it falls off, and then you have to get water and put it back on? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what, what my feet look like. Look like. <laughs> they, yeah, that's disgusting. It's, it's, I have, I have, and look at, look at, uh, you can see I like the pinch like around my ankle. That's because my skin got swollen from the sunburn and, and, and from the elevation in the air. My sock was like, I had to peel my sock oh. off my skin. 
<laughs> these look like 90 year old feet <laughs> yes <laughs> like if i said that's my great grandmother's foot you'd yeah. say yes it is it looks like what they took off of oscar pistorius <laughs> <laughs> Like, sorry, sir, these no longer function. Yeah. <laughs> Removed them. Dude, it's 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 it, it's amazing though to be like, you know, down there and like around a guy like like Jake Paul, like, cause he's just like, you know, I'll complain. Like, I'm like, I have to do a podcast and then I have my special and then I have this. And then it's like he's fighting a boxing match in San Juan, like three hours after we did he did like five hours of podcasting worked out for two hours did five different promos did Holy all these shit. things like donated money to san juan and then went and fought and won a fight in an arena and i'm like i can't say my words <laughs> <laughs> he had a fight he, so he did that boxing match against no that no boxer? It's, it's this weekend oh, i was wow. just saying because like this will be out on monday yeah yeah no that's amazing i mean that is truly crazy that guy's that guy's schedule must be like immovable it's so stacked. It, no, dude, it's it's crazy, but it's it, but it's cool to see like how well he manages it all. Uh, you know, it's not it's been nice to get to know him as a person because I think you know I'll see like you know you post you know he'll you know I reposted the podcast and like you know Lancelot Brian Morton would be like you know, all these people are like you know t you're telling me like you know hating on Jake or you know like whatever yeah. or looking on if I'm looking on social media I'd be like you know people will DM me be like oh you know fuck that guy it's like dude. I'm done. I'm done with, with, and I've said this before. Here's what I honestly think. If you, right, here's the thing. If you message me or anybody else, anybody you follow, whatever, about someone you hate that you don't know even remotely at all, I think you're retarded. That's what I genuinely think, and I'm going to send you back a link on, you know, I'm going to send you pictures of short buses. <laughs> I, you have to understand how stupid it is to me. Like, if I don't know you personally, if I don't, I'm talking about like, dude, I don't know Donald Trump person. I've never met him. All I know is what the edited versions that the media puts out or he himself puts out. But it's like this whole, I'm only judging people and go and making an honest opinion if I've met you in the flesh and actually know you. If I don't know you, I can't give you the time of day. And it's amazing how many people you have commenting and messaging about people they don't like. I'm only seeing it on my account. I'm sure it happens, you know, all, but it's like, what are you, how big of a loser do you have to be in your life? It's like, dude, go make opinions about people you actually physically know and have met. Yeah, or, you know, tell a friend. Yeah. Instead of DMing. Like, that is a definite good outlet, is having a friend. Yeah. To talk about this stuff with. Because, yeah, it does feel also weird because, I mean, you know, I've gotten it about my friends. Or, right. like, somebody being like, it, when it did, here's the scenario, love you, hate one of the other ones, or vice versa. They'd get the same, and it's like, no, I'm team my friends over you, fella. Yeah, I don't like, know. Like, I get it. I get you feel involved, and it's totally cool. That's what the pod is doing. We are bringing you in. That's intentional. But... I love you in the same way you love me. Same with Vito. It's like we're not turning on each other no. to curry favor with an anonymous maniac. But you see, this is this is the problem though, because I got back on social media a little bit and already I'm getting mad. So just I, in time for the special. <laughs> yeah, just in time for the special. <laughs> so I am back on. So just make you know, you might catch me on my page. So funny thing about Jake Paul, he looks a lot like Harrison Bader. And yes. you look like Harrison Bader. So did you ever realize oh. that you're on a pokey evolution train right. with Jake Paul? You guys have similar features, actually, you and Jake Paul. Yeah. I can see that. Because yeah. look, like, at, look at Harrison Bader. Harrison Bader and Chris look somewhat alike. Yeah. yeah a little right. bit. People Here, always... Here's the one. This is the kind of face of Bader. Where yeah, like, yeah. That look like. looks like Chris. Yeah. But here he looks like Jake Paul. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, Chris and Chris and Jake look like they maybe brothers, but definitely cousins. Like they just look touched by the same genetics, not right. quite the yeah. exact copy. Right. Clearly, out of those three, I'm the one that people would want to be the least. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, what else we got? We got oh, we, we have Wonka. Oh my God, dude! In Glasgow, which I'll be in June. I'll be in Glasgow. Dude, I'm going to make my comedy show an even bigger disaster than Willy Wonka. So come to Glasgow Glasgow in June. ChristyComedy.com for tickets. Is that what I should start doing, though? Much like Wonka, should I just start AIing that I'm selling out theaters? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and just creating a narrative that eventually maybe I'll live up to? If yeah. John was ever here again, he could design it for you. John. Yeah. John. Where's John? Here. So this, so this Willy Wonka thing, what was the issue with it, really? That just people paid and there was nothing there? So the issue was people paid for, like, a Willy Wonka experience, 
Um, the the website, if you go to it, I'll see if it's still up. The website promoted it with AI and like made it look like it was gonna be this incredible thing. Like it was gonna feel like you were actually in the chocolate factory. And then when people got there, it was not. So this is the website. But I wanna ask you as a member of 2024 society. Yes. When you see a website like this that has no, like clearly no real images, don't your spidey senses go off? A hundred percent. Like immediately? There's, there's no fucking photos or anything. Like, there's just AI pictures and random, like, notes. Like, I, I don't know what idiots went into this just thinking this was going to be great. But at the same time, what was there is not... It's awesome. It's not okay it's what awesome. was there. You like, you like what was there. You I like just, the event. I just like the idea that, you know... Listen, I would have been pissed, of course, and I would have demanded my money back, like, of course. But... There's something fun about people that refuse to do the research, only look at an AI picture, and then go and are treated to reality. It's actually kind of a nice thing of like, hey, yeah. this is what's out there. Yeah, but also, here's the other flip side. I get that, but it's also like the the people who are complaining were the adults, because I guarantee you the kids didn't care. And right. the no, kids the, probably liked it. The kids were screaming and crying. Really? Because the kids the were adults. screaming and crying. That's because of the adults. adults. Because well, the adults were hitting them with hot pokers. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, even if... I mean, it doesn't you, look great. Like, if you showed up to a thing that you were excited to go to... Because think about when you're a kid. Like, you're told you're going to this amazing place, and you show up, and this is what you get. You're probably going to be fucking crying. Kids cry about everything. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I guess if it, it depends on the age, too. Because I think if I took my four-year-old to this, he'd be fired up to have an open space to run. Yeah. Like, it would. but if he's, like, Dude, eight, then like I Like, when guess. I took my daughter... When I took my daughter to Disney... We were in the hotel parking lot, and they had a playground in the hotel parking lot, which wasn't even on Disney property yet. And she was playing in the parking lot, uh, like um, playground mm -hmm. that they had. And then I said, "We're getting on the bus to go," and she was like, "We just got here." <laughs> and I was like, "We're going to Disney," and she was like, "This isn't Disney." Yeah. So she thought that was Disney. Yeah. Because the kids don't care. This is scary, though. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. To have an actual person making meth <laughs> yes. at the counter <laughs> is like a truly weird thing. Yeah, no, that it, is it shut down or do, are they revamping it? What the, are they doing? The, it's shut down. They called the cops. Like the, the cops came in, the the parents were freaking out, the kids were crying and screaming. So and day one around. it got shut down. Uh yeah, day day one it got shut down. The website's still functioning, but I think they paid like somewhere between like sixty to hundred bucks a ticket. Oh Damn. shit. Yeah, uh, it yeah, wasn't I mean, like a five dollar thing. Here's the thing: that is your bad. That is kind of your right. look online. I agree. I find agree. out reviews, figure it out, do a, a little bit of research. I mean, <laughs> it, it it really makes me laugh though because I used to give tours at the Museum of Natural History. That was like really? one of my that was one of my early jobs to like balance show business and that's life. awesome. I didn't know that about you. Yeah, I got fired because I stole Polaroid film. Now can we? <sighs> I have an idea. <laughs> so dumb. What if we go to the museum one day yeah. and you take us through your tour? I could do that. What would great. you tour? What was the tour like? It was, just, it was mostly like birthday parties and shit like that. But we would we would do like some sort of circle, act out the animals downstairs in the party area, and then take them through the dinosaurs. I'd teach them about the dinosaurs, show them. I'd do some dino growls, bring my arms in like T Rex. I'd do all that thing. I was more or less the injected buffoon that didn't have much of an education, but I could really make these kids laugh and have a good time. And then everybody else was, you know, doing the real. The when real did work. you? What years was this? That was like 09, 2010. Like oh, wow. when I first started comedy. That, that was yeah, your job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was kind of cool to go to the hit museum. Every it was day. awesome. I did the Museum of Natural History and I also did um, the Central Park Zoo. Really? Like all the time. Wow. Dude, I, I, my first day on this job. I forgot that I was working and I was up doing pressed pills ecstasy until like 5 a.m. I my eyes opened at 9:45 a.m. My first day of work was scheduled for 9:30 a.m. <laughs> I immediately 80 calls like where are you? What the fuck is your problem? I'm calling back like all oh, my phone. You know there was a solar flare. Everything yeah. shut off in my apartment. Sorry, and I didn't shower. Showed up. I have ecstasy bags under my eyes i'm still half rolling i'm depressed i'm like talking to the kids about how life is meaningless <laughs> and then you know just got through like one and a half birthday parties for that day and they liked me enough to keep me on for like almost a year wow yeah. and then you got fired for stealing polaroids for stealing polaroid film for my girlfriend now uh, girlfriend at the time now wife her polaroid cam and they weren't using it they were not in use and i took like two ca things to see if it fit and then they were like we have you on camera you're so, fired. On the spot fired. No, they just stopped. <laughs> they just stopped booking me. And I had to call them and be like, what's up with that? And they're like, you were caught stealing. And I was like, you pussies. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't even tell me in the moment. It's so fucking late. Like I know. That's the, that, I've, I've been fired like that twice. 
Really? Where the person just stop, didn't tell me. Instead, they just stopped scheduling me. Pasta Amore in Piermont, New York. Fuck Pasta Amore. Shout out Pasta Amore. Yeah. I mean, fuck, fuck Pasta Amore. Yeah, it's closed now anyway. But yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah. The owner of it was just this booze bag who was like literally sniffing the seat of this like 40-year-old woman party in the back room. He was like walking around like truly like smelling their hair, doing weird shit. And then I was getting a lot. It's the end of the night. I'm like rolling up my sleeves, cleaning up everything. And he just looks at me with a disgusted look. Yeah. Whispered to the bartender. And later that night, I found out that I'm no longer on any shift. <laughs> Dude. You said pasta more, and I can't explain to you how hungry I am. I'm I sorry. would eat fettuccine Alfredo with my hands right now. Let's do it right after this. Right yeah. after this, we're gonna. Should we have Mexican food after this? There's yeah, a place yeah. next door. Is right? it good? Have you ever had it? I, I look. I usually come here and leave. Speaking of Mexicans, let's do the parent of the week. <laughs> so the parent of the week is actually very close to home. It hits very very close to home. We have a our parent of the week this week is what if you if you're new to the show. Every week we talk about uh, a parent of the week. Maybe they did something wild. Maybe they did something horrific. We just highlight a parenting story because we're all parents in here. M Mike and I have actual children. John's got one in the way, and Vito's got the mouth of a baby. <laughs> so we all are in some way connected to children. So the parent of the week, the POW, is Mr. Mike Cannon. Tell him why, folks. Oh, dear God, tell guys. Him, tell everyone. Bring them to the beginning. <laughs> yeah. if, in case you didn't listen to it a couple episodes ago, tell them. Couple episodes ago, I let you guys in on some of the family planning that my wife and I had been going through. We got pregnant about September, October. Unfortunately, my wife got uh, got COVID and had a pretty instant uh, miscarriage. Another Biden, uh, body on Biden's hands. Then we got we got pregnant afterwards. I, I think I told this. I'm just speeding through. May have been chemical. May not have been. She had a miscarriage in Florida, or so we thought. Ke we kept the doctor's appointment with her midwife because we wanted to check her hormones and just how to get her body right so we can continue trying uh we get back from vacation we go to the doctor's appointment about a week and a half later nicole uh, my wife goes in texts me after 20 minutes just a heads up i did not miscarry i'm 11 weeks pregnant this is weeks ago and in five days we find out if it's a boy or a girl <laughs> and right now my wife is 16 weeks pregnant and we're expecting our second boy there it is folks <laughs> congratulations that? to how mike about that my Dude. cum functions yes it works it's so funny I, I mean as soon as that kid is born my first thing i said to him is like dude we thought you were dead <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, truly what i mean do i name him bram stoker's dracula yes like, what is his i think name? you name him john john i john. think it's the because i think it's the reincarnation of john's fucking failed, i think you name him jesus ecuadorian baby <laughs> you name him jesus he came back from the dead yeah that's not bad yeah what do you think you actually might name him I don't know. Is it bad luck to do the names? What I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, with with my first son, it was so easy because I threw out the suggestion as almost a goof, and it was instantly. And Nicole accepted. was like, "Yep, instantly." I mean, I genuinely thought because they're so Italian, we were going to name them like Cologno Ragu yeah, or yeah. something <laughs> along those lines. But like, I threw out the you know crew from Rad, and the, I, her cousins ran with it. Baby crew, baby crew, we love it. Boom! Instantly with that. With this one, we're like throwing names to each other, and it's as if we hate each other. Yeah, <laughs> like. Just for coming up with what we're coming up with, we're like, no. Do you want it to be with a C again, like crew cannon Ooh, and then like C the cannon? That's that. That is not necessarily important. To okay. Me. Yeah, I just want a name where it feels like it's like, yeah, that's his name. May that's I suggest something? Yes. yes. Well, we wanted to get people to comment nicknames for something the other episode, but that went to Patreon only. Right. So I feel like this is a good time to suggest name my baby. Name the baby. Name the baby. Name my baby. And Cannot be called Mike. Please leave the show. <laughs> <laughs> if they, is there anything you could give people if they win? If you choose, if you choose a name based on a suggestion, like if this. you choose the, if I choose the name based on your suggestion, his middle name will be your first name. Wow! Wow! wow. How about that, dude? Do you want I to check hope with your wife. No, I that's hope, how much I love this show, and I'm devoted to it. I hope and pray the guy that comes up with the names. I hope his name is Osama. <laughs> So then your kid has to be Jack Osama Cannon. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by GenuCell. Look at this face. Zoom in. Get every crack and crevice because there is nobody that requires, that needs, that demands GenuCell more than this absolute November leaf of a man just crinkled and dissipating into the air. Me. I am dry. I am brittle. And I need GenuCell to look the youngest version of myself. It's natural, it's clean, and free from mineral oil, parabens, and harmful chemicals. That's right what I'm looking for as well. Formulated by a, by a compounding pharmacist. What? 
two for two so far. Let's, there's no way that they'll do a third. It's also cruelty-free. You mean they don't smear it on the eyes of a ferret to make sure it works? Where do I sign up? And guys, introducing Gen 90, the new instant wrinkle treatment from GenuCell. Gen 90 instantly reduces the appearance of wrinkles anywhere you use it, around the eyes, the forehead, the crow's feet, laugh lines, and it starts working in seconds. I'm literally ordering this before I read this advertisement. Gen 90 technology is luxurious, nourishing, and silk smooth. And best of all, it starts working in seconds. I know because I'm about to feel the tingle. I'm so excited. Gen 90 is on sale now at genucel.com. That's G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com. Gen 90 is now on sale at genucel.com. Give the gift of luxury skincare and timeless beauty during this limited time promotion. Order right now at genucel.com slash chaos. That's G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash chaos. Free shipping on all orders. Genucel.com slash chaos. Genucel.com slash chaos. What is this? Congratulations, Painter of the Week. Let's get into some phone calls. You know that we love when you guys call, guys, girls, and babies call the show. You get, you can leave us uh, a voicemail, piece of advice. Mike, Mike, and I will do the best we can to give you advice. It could be about parenting, it could be about life, whatever it is. Um, you call that number. We'll put the number up right here on the screen and just give it a call. So let's listen to this first voicemail. Well, uh, well, the number is 347-323-3321. Let's listen to this first voicemail from, is it this a guy? Uh, I don't remember. They're genderless. Mm. Hey, Chris. Question, 30 seconds. I have four kids. Two are autistic, and my oldest is um, on drugs. So I was just curious to know, how you would handle that, I am blocked. Bye-bye. So two kids who are autistic, and what was the other two? Uh, well, one is selling drugs. So that's what she's saying. Her oldest is selling drugs, and then she has two autistic children that obviously take a lot of her attention. And then, unfortunately, her oldest is also selling drugs. I'm curious what – I mean, I guess this is kind of like splitting hairs, but I am curious what kind of drugs, because if it's weed, I, I don't know. That just maybe. He more, might be an entrepreneur. Do you want to call her? <laughs> you know? We have her number right here if you wanted to call her. Really? It's right there. Should we do a live call on the pod? We've never done that. I'm just throwing something out. Well, well, how will we be able to hear it? We would just put it on speaker. Oh, like call from my phone? Or I can call from my phone and see what happens. Yeah, okay. You, you can't have your number out there. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. But I mean, I, how do you block a number again? Star, star six, seven. seven. Do you want to dive in before we get like just any because how would I I mean, if it's serious shit, like if he's selling hard drugs like Coke pills, whatever, I mean, I would I personally would probably show my kid what that does to people, what that does to communities, what that does to to people that are addicted. I would, you know, if you live in Philly, if you live wherever, take them to Kensington, take them to an area where people are fucking struggling and point in their face and say, this is what right. you're doing. This is truly what you're contributing to society. You're taking people down. Right. I, I mean, dude, honestly, I would get these autistic kids involved in the drug business. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they would be good COOs. What's her name? They definitely can balance the books. What is it, 267? Oh, we'll, we'll leave a voicemail if they don't pick up. Yeah. We'll, we'll do it. Take him. Hey, Aaron. Uh, this is Chris Stefano and Mike Cannon uh, hey. from the Chrissy Chaos Podcast. We just got your voicemail. We're giving you a call back, but I'm, I'm sure you couldn't pick up the phone because two of your children are probably biting people and the other one's getting arrested. Um, <laughs> So I know you're a little busy right now, but we wanted to give you some advice um, on uh, your question. And I think that I think you should get your entire family involved in the drug business because it is an entrepreneurial business, especially if it's weed. Um, if it's fentanyl or something else, don't do it. But if it's weed, we say it's A-OK. -okay. Mike? And mushrooms. Anything yeah. that expands your consciousness, I think that's perfectly OK. And he's actually doing more good than harm. Yep, and we know by your area code that you're most likely from Philly, so why don't you just sit down, calm down, and have a water <laughs> or a hoogie. Hey, it's Tuesday. 
<laughs> it's Tuesday. <laughs> I hate that I gave sincere advice and then you just slammed the best joke possible. Because <laughs> that is the best. Yeah, of course. Have them run your books. Yeah, have it do it. Yeah. So right. we're trying new things on the show. If you leave a voicemail, there's a chance we'll call we'll you call back. We'll call you back. Yeah. Why the hell not? I will call you back from Vito's phone. Um, all right, let's listen to one more voicemail. I want to hear one more. I am so hungry, I'm going to pass out. Yeah. I'm a little dizzy. Was that from your fucking stomach, dude? <laughs> yeah. That, like, you did <laughs> The end came out your mouth. That all was heard from yeah. inside. Inside. Hi, Christy. Um, hold on for a little bit of advice. Um, my wife and I, our three-year-old daughter is a terrible sleeper. Um, she wakes up con constantly throughout the night. Sometimes, like, every, like, 30 minutes or every hour. Usually, she has some kind of strange request where, I don't know, she needs, like, a special toy or she wants juice or something like that, but she just won't go to sleep and, like, stay asleep. Um, so, if you could just give some, some tips or something like that, I'd like to hear it. Thanks. Bye. So some tips on um, sleeping. Well, yeah, I mean, honestly, I would suggest going over to her and just talking to her in her ear because you have the most monotonous voice I've ever heard in my <laughs> life. Um, no, no, it's British. And it's actually, I, you know what? For me, you could do that to her. But for me, don't do that to me because honestly, as I was listening to your voice, I was getting erect. Yeah, I was getting a little um, pumped up. No, I'm kidding. But I think, honestly, I would get a professional sleep trainer. Mm -hmm. Like that, they have people who like actually sleep train. It's... I, I've dealt with this too. My kids do not sleep well. I, we absolutely messed up the sleep training. We 100% did. But I know someone whose kid got messed up. You know, their sleep was all messed up, and they got a sleep trainer. And the sleep trainer fixed the problem in like three nights. Yeah. And if you don't have, if you if financially, if you can't afford that, you can go online and just put sleep train my kid and do all that. Well, that's what we had to do because, and it's basically controlled negligence. You kind of just decide that you're going to be a parent during these hours, and then you have to leave them to their own devices unless an emergency is happening. So you lay it out to your kid being like, hey, this is the time that you can get any and all toys into your bed. Make your decision now. Right. After this, it's over. Books are closed. Same way for anything else. It's like if you come out of bed and it's not an emergency and you don't have to go to the bathroom or something else, Mom and I are still going to be asleep. We're going to continue to sleep. You can get yourself back into bed. I've literally done this to my son where I am not your parent between these hours. <laughs> yeah. If I'm supposed to be sleeping and there's no danger happening, don't even call me dad. <laughs> <laughs> Try that. I, I mean, I, it, listen, dude, here's the thing. Here's the thing, man, with, you know, the guy, I know what you're going through. And sometimes it makes, it would make me feel like, am I like not a good parent? Everybody, every kid is just so different and every strategy is just so different. It seems like you're doing the best you can. You're asking for help. If you haven't looked into sleep training already, do that. You know, and then if not, man, it's like she will, your daughter will eventually grow out of it. They, of course, they yeah. always will. Well, something hopefully that makes you feel better is that this is not abnormal. <laughs> like right. my son is constantly waking up and be like, Dad! Dad! Yeah. I want my dragon. Yeah. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. And it's like... It's just an impulse that they wake up where they cannot be whole unless one of their other toys is right. in bed with them. Yeah, I mean, or you could just like honestly, like you know, just threaten threaten her life. <laughs> yeah. Say if you get out of bed again, mm -hmm. if you so how about this? Say if you say tell your daughter, say if you get out of bed again, mommy's gonna die. <laughs> That's nice. See and that? Then, yeah. Don't then, put anything on you. Just yeah. say I'll I will your mom will die if you get out of bed again in the middle of the night. And then crush up some melatonin and put it on the chicken and say it's sea salt. Yep. There you go. Drug your kid. <laughs> but dude, don't worry about it. You're not alone with that. We all yeah. as parents, our kids wake up through the night and the people who are on Instagram are like, these are the five hacks that you can do and yeah. your kid will never get out of bed. It's like, shut up. Okay, not everybody is you. Well, first of all, those people, as proven recently, aren't even real people. A lot of the times, or maybe just one recently, they torture their children. So who, who tortured their kids? What's the, that? The YouTube mom influencer that just got arrested and taken in because she was literally torturing her child, not feeding it, like chaining it to a radiator, beating it, like that type I of shit. I want to redo it as parent of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I actually think she's a parent of the week, too. 
We could do that on the Patreon. We'll do that. On, yeah, we'll talk about it on the Patreon. All right, mean comments. Let's get to the mean comments. One of my favorite parts of the show. You guys leave mean comments. We pick the ten or so best and we read them out, and we'll tell and we'll we'll call out your uh, YouTube name too. This is from at UWOTM. Both Chris and Mike look like they got puffy nipples. Yeah, we both do. We've said it a million times. Yeah, I mean, my my nipples are hairier than they are puffy, but I used to have. Did you, when you go through pu when you went through puberty, did you have like those deposits? Like oh the yeah, fat deposits. Yeah, they used to, and a, I had a fat, and I I had to get a um a chest X ray when I was like nine because one side was so much bigger than the other side that they thought I had an enlarged heart. No but then shit. they found that it was just excess fatty tissue <laughs> in my specific left hip. Dude, that's tough to be just like have clinical bitch tits. Yeah. <laughs> like that is tough when they diagnose you with that. But then it was like, I have to have gynecomastia. And they said, I don't. They're like, no, you don't. That's cool. Yeah. But anyway, why does that go away? Is that a puberty thing? Yeah, it was a puberty thing. Okay. But I'm, I still have a saggy, misshaped left chest. It's better than my buddy. My buddy's like, my buddy's nipples go in like a chubby Asian person's eyes. Like they literally <laughs> invert and you can't even see the nipple. And it oh. like it's like the, the nipple swallows itself. That sucks. Yeah. I noticed that I was growing body hair on my nipples before anywhere else. I remember looking in the mirror one day, seeing nipple hair, and then yeah. looking at my armpit and being like, oh, there it is. It's all coming in. Each of my nickel nipples look like Alcatraz. Yeah. <laughs> we showed your nipples on a clip. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Christmas, right. I think. That's right. <laughs> at Forrest Whitaker's left eye, Chris is a gay man and that's okay. How far is Whitaker's left eye? That is unreal. It's a great, is a really amazing name. That's one of the best names I've heard on this show. Really Forrest great. Whitaker's left eye. Chris is a gay man, and that's okay. That is okay. That I'm is not a gay man, but it is okay to be gay. And I'm not, and I, I'm not. My name's <laughs> my name's Meek Mill. <laughs> Steve ate the ice cream. Moke sucks. <laughs> <laughs> The ultimate disrespect of not even spelling it correctly. Yep. <laughs> yep. Good. Moke. Dude, you want to know what's awful about like autocorrect? I've written like, you know, my avails to SD at the cellar and like I sign it, Mike, but it autocorrects sometimes to smoke. <laughs> so sometimes <laughs> it looks like I'm just giving a badass nickname for myself. Smoke yeah. cannon. Here are my avails. Smoke. Smoke. <laughs> Smoke Cannon's a fire name. That's not Dude. bad, right? So is Mo Cannon. Smoke Cannon's a good child name. That's a good suggestion on the comments. Merch. Crew and Smoke. <laughs> Crew and Smoke. I kind of like that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. At Woody576. No matter how divisive Chrissy's comments can be, it's nice to see everyone unite behind one ideal. Baby teeth as an adult is gross. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I mean, look, okay, there's nothing I could do at this point. I mean, I could. I said there's nothing I could do. I could get surgery, but yeah. I'm just going to fucking deal with it. Can deal we, with it. Is something recording your face? Yes. Okay, good, because I think you need to show what your face did in response to that comment okay. because it was involuntary and one of the best moments of my life. Yeah. <laughs> it was <laughs> better than his son. <laughs> like, truly, yeah. Finding out my dead son is not dead, that was better than that. Because I forgot the first half I was, like, reading it. I was like, oh, it's about me. <laughs> All right, David Patriot 1082. Oh, you guys, you don't have to come out. Your haircuts are already visible. <laughs> All right, David the Patriot. What okay. are you a patriot of? It's also like, what are you just high and tight? Like, I'd love to see what yeah. hair you have. This is from at Codell's 187, an hour of brain rot fuel. <laughs> see, this is like, this is, this guy loves, I bet, Sean Strickland. Yeah, is somebody, is somebody like this who's now like he's turning on the podcast that he likes. He's like, wait, this is right. This is stupid. It's making me dumber. And he's like, this is brain rot fuel. It's like, yeah, sure. But you're not supposed to learn. Yeah. Dummy. At FN, at FNPM. Chris, have you got Tourette's early Parkinson's ADHD or just on drugs or what? It seems like you have some constant ticks in the whole body going on in every video I see you. Please take care. Well. I don't know. Uh, that just gave me anxiety and I'm going to the doctor. That's the whole thing, right? Yeah. It's like, of course, like, how am I now supposed to behave naturally when I've been accused of having several diseases? Well, I do. I will say this. I did it today in the gym. I will sometimes be having a conversation or thinking about something in my head and then audibly respond to it when yeah. no one's around. Does everyone yeah. do that? Yeah. Do you ever, I have a, do you ever hear something in a conversation and accidentally text that to the person you're speaking to? Oh, I haven't done that. What do you so, mean? So, like, me and you will be talking, and I'll be, like, texting my wife. 
and you'll say like, um, oh yeah, that's fine. We can do that. And I'll be in the middle of a text with my wife and I'll literally send to her. Yeah, that's fine. Like what you just said to me, I will accidentally <laughs> send to her. Wow. That's because we're slowly morphing with the phone. Yeah. yeah. We're becoming one. Yeah. Do I, am I in control of the phone or is the phone in control of me? But also you've always had uh, anxiety type movements. Like even when we were younger in comedy, I used to tell you that you reminded me of Dangerfield because you were always tugging on your shirt right. and always like flattening it out. Whereas like that was his whole thing. Like right. the nervous tick was moving yeah. his tie and shit. And it's like, yeah, that's that comes probably from overactive brain and just general discomfort in society. Well, maybe one day I'll have a comedy club that people will ruin. <laughs> <laughs> that people will repaint to look like the wreck yeah. deck on the Titanic. All right, here we go. And I'm not just saying this to suck you off, but I don't think you have any like weird like ADHD or Parkinson's. Thank you, Vito. Ticks. Now do me. Do you have ticks? <laughs> now do, no, do me. Tell me I have oh, nothing. And you know what? You're great. You're not moke. You're Thanks. Mike. Yes. Moke. Thanks, All right. Man. At I N F. 3C. In th fact, his name is like, in fact, no. don't name Adrenochrome? Oh, no. Oh, man, you guys came inside a woman so brave. Please run my country for me because I'm too stupid to have a say in it. Why, where's that coming from? A few weeks ago, you guys said that you shouldn't be able to vote if you don't have kids. Also, this guy's name is Inf Infected No Name 58. Got oh. it. I stand by my comment, Infected No Name 58. I think that the fact that I was brave enough to come inside a woman, as allegedly, she, I think that that then entitles me that my opinion is more valuable than yours when it comes down to anything. Well, because we have an actual investment in the future while you're writing comments. Yep. Stupid. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't comment Beach. back to you publicly because my kid was shitting their pants. <laughs> Infected coward, 58, your fucking name, pussy. Yeah, bitch. Yeah. You don't want this smoke cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Downs Indrome. I didn't make these this week, and I feel like John put a lot about me. In yeah, he yeah. really is. He's coming for you, dude. He's He wants you to feel his absence. He said, Vito sounds like my seventh grade basketball coach who everyone thought was the meanest teacher coach we had at the time. I mean, that is a beautiful, <laughs> very it. specific to you memory to share yeah, publicly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fair enough. All right. Here we go. At Lucid M6067. It's 2024, and Chris is still wearing Jasmine's pants. Are my pants too tight? Is that what they're saying? No. I don't think so. No, but I mean, I think you did say in a previous episode something about, you might have made a joke about them being Jasmine's pants. Yes. You were wearing the same pants for a few episodes in a row. The black jeans, the right? Black or, jeans, the, yeah. or the Lululemons. One or the, or the other. Black jeans. You were yeah. in the black jeans a lot. Yeah, well, I have to. Now there's a hole in the ass of them. Of so, the Lulus? Yeah, no, the black jeans. The Lulu, dude, the Lululemon athleisure does not rip. No. Jeans are not a good. The, athleisure is a much better investment than jeans. You just have to get better denim. You're getting, you're getting dog shit. I'm getting Zara. Yeah, exactly. That's what you know. That's what I'm wearing on my spash. <laughs> are you? Yeah. <laughs> Zara, baby. I they remember, should send you shit. I remember before. Radio City, you were like, I'm going to, you were talking about the suit you wanted to get. You showed me a few different concepts. And then I was in Italy. I got back and I saw all these pictures of you wearing like t-shirt and jeans. Yeah, I wore, I wore black jeans from Zara that weren't even new. Um, Radio City specific sneakers that were pretty cool. Those were awesome. A black t-shirt and a jacket I bought at a flea market. Well, that was like the Rocky at the zoo jacket yeah. too yeah. with the tiger on the back. I mean, that was unreal. It was pretty dope. Was so good. Yeah. It was a great outfit, but it was just funny because all leading up to it, you were telling me that you were yeah. debating over different outfits. Yeah. Everywhere. And Chris I didn't told do me anything. yesterday, he's like, I go, did you get your outfit? And he goes, Sunday morning. Yeah. <laughs> I'm filming it Sunday. I'm going to the Queen Center Mall Sunday morning. <laughs> that makes sense because if you buy something and you like the way it looks like two weeks ago, how do you know you're going to like the way it looks the day before you're... I, I think know. you're doing the right thing. Yeah, I'm having second thoughts already, and I, I'm a month out, and I bought my... April 6th, come out. Come produced out. Produced by Chris Stefano, Stanford, Stanford, Connecticut. Connecticut. 30 minutes away from the city and Rockland County. I may have done that on purpose. Accessible by Metro North, right? So there you go. So Tickets so are actually almost sold out, so get them now. Do it. And then for me, ChrisDComedy.com, we got a show in Dubai in April, and then we got the UK and Ireland the first two weeks of June, chrisdcomedy.com for Tiki Wikis. That's where you'll find me.